Hello everyone, this is a question and answer session and uh, Edita and myself, we are going to answer to your question. Uh, Violet from United States um, asks, when do you integrate musicality into your teaching and how do you balance this when there is a lot of focus on teaching technique? So I would like to start by answering that the musicality and music is the most important thing for the dancing because the description of the dancing is movement to the music. So if I would start to teach somebody from zero, first I would try to explain the music and would let them just clap to the music. So this is very, very important. I would say that the answer would be from the beginning. Uh, if you ask uh, for the higher level and uh, about very complicated uh, action techniques, uh, technique cannot exist without the music. So all the technical actions are very, very uh, tight, connect, tight, tight, tight connected with the music. So any action that you want to produce in a ballroom dancing, you have to do it to the music. So none of the concentration can take you out from the musicality. Even if you dance without the music, you still have to try to concentrate on the counting. Uh, whether you count slows and quicks, whether you count numbers. So it's absolutely together with the technique. Yes, I agree. Uh, many one mentioned that the musicality is a something like a, a more high level expression, high level body expression. And I believe that uh, uh, without technique, you cannot have a high level of musicality. So if, uh, for example, I will be of balance, I cannot put my best musicality into the dancing. Even that I know correctly the timing, the rhythm, and of course the music. So uh, I totally agree that uh, musicality is uh, has to be the priority, the music should be the priority. And then, in a high level, from the improvement of the technique, you will uh, develop uh, also your expression by using better musicality. To follow the music is one thing, to improve the musicality is a little bit more high level thing that you should uh, develop it in relation of the technique. The second question is uh, very close to myself, is Enrico from Italy. <laughs> I would like to know what are some of your best practice habits when it's come to alternative training and rest? Uh, well, is, uh, I think that the dancer, uh, dancing is uh, an art and, and a sport that is not so easy. You should, be, uh, you should be training every day if you would like to be uh, a, good, uh, a good level dancer, if you would like to improve your dancing. And of course, uh, also once you preparing for the competition as well, you should be uh, training a lot. But I don't think that there is a, a preparation for the competition and uh, different kind of uh, training system. I think what I did and what we did in our dancing career, uh, we tried to practice as much as possible. Of course, often uh, we felt our practice good and the, we tried to, to follow that kind of feeling also for the following practice. Often it's not easy because uh, sometimes you try to improve or try to add some new action and it's not easy to have the same feeling every time that you're going to practice. I would like to advise Fonrico to divide his practice into three parts. Physical preparation, uh, improvement of the quality, and then the last one, stamina practice during the dance. So like this, uh, Enrico, you can actually manage to control all the levels that you need. So first of all, without the quality, uh, the dancing has no value. So therefore, you have to improve the quality. I would say if you can practice every day the quality 
And when you practice the quality, you pass through, maybe you choose one dance to analyze for the day, and you're working very hard on that day, on this particular dance. And after you do like uh, stamina practice, so you dance this dance non-stop. And like this uh, also the other days. Of course, you can have also, and you must have, uh, one time per week, you must have a final simulation. And of course, uh, you can have a lot of physical exercises and physical preparation, uh, which uh, would be outside of the dancing floor. So you can go to gym, you can go jogging, but uh, none of the preparation will help you without the stamina exercises during the dance. Uh, we have uh, Arthur from United Kingdom uh, who asks how to balance receiving information and applying information. How do you recommend to practice after receiving information? So um, generally not only in the dancing world, any information that we receive every day from different places, after we receive information first uh, we have to analyze if this information has any value to us. So is, was this information valuable? Is it suitable for you? So first you have to analyze the information. And of course, after you analyze the information that you get and you have decided together, of course, with your partner, if it is useful for you, you have to try to uh, apply it as soon as possible. The sooner you apply, the sooner it will start working. I totally agree with you. Great. So next question is Sarah from Israel. How should the training before a competition like should look like? Should it be different than normal training to put yourself in the best physically, physical and mental state? Of course, the competition before the train. If uh, I mention last competition before, last uh, training before the competition. Uh, as Edita suggests uh, in, the, in the question before, it's very important the stamina practice. And uh, of course it's very important to uh, feel if you are physically in the condition to afford the competition. But also it's uh, important to understand uh, mentally if you are ready to afford the competition more than physically. Because, uh, Mainly in before the competition, uh, last practice should be based on the dancing without stop in order to uh, think about not so concentrating into the technique but more into the expression and more into how to go into the competition and feel like uh, ready to compete. So therefore the last competition, I suggest to stay less into the small detail as a technical detail and going more through the dancing without stop. Well, I also, like you said before, I don't believe really in the preparation for the competition because uh, the top dancers have the competitions nearly each weekend. So therefore you have to practice all the time. The way I already advised before, advise the same for you, to divide the practice into quality, stamina and physical preparation. And of course, before the competitions, maybe instead of one stamina per week or competition simulation, you have to do two of them. But uh, what I would advise before competition, I would advise one or two days rest. Depends how you practice before, because the body needs to, to rest psychologically and mentally you will be more fresh, you will feel more strong if just the day before competition you actually do something else outside of the dancing well. So for me normally uh, the movie is helping. If I watch the movie I don't think about anything else in the world. So try that. Uh, next question, Mary from the United Kingdom asks how can you achieve the best ballroom hold when the gent is taller than the desired height for the lady, for example, 20 centimeters difference. What are some ways to deal with this? Please explain as well for the classes, for the cases uh, when the lady is taller by five and 10 centimeters, can they dance together? Thank you. Uh, I think uh, Dance Sport Life will agree with that. Yeah. Um, if you just could watch a lecture about posture, we spoke exactly about these problems. 
So if you watch that lecture, you will have a perfect, perfect explanation and advice how to deal with this. Next one is uh, Anton from Russia. What are your thoughts on the pressure that you should or should be felt in the center area and etc. in the couple when he is in the contact? How is important is the pressure into that, into this area? Uh, I will answer like Edita, you can go to the dance sport <laughs> life. But of course I would like to answer a little bit more to Anton. And uh, I would like to say that uh, you mentioned two very important points of connection. You mentioned the center area of the body and you center the hands. You, pr uh, you mentioned the hands. And for sure, uh, these is, uh, are the most uh, uh, strongly part that we have to connect into the couple. Uh, for sure, this is, is depend on uh, your level of dancing. Uh, definitely, if uh, you are like uh, beginner level or intermediate level, I suggest to have uh, more strong pressure and more strong hand connection in order to have more solid look, in order to look more together in a couple. This is will help. Of course, uh, little by little, improving your uh, dancing, you can start to change the pressure and you can start to make it a little bit more specific in relation of the step that you're going to dance, in relation of what do you need on that specific step. If you need more lightness into the center, if you need more lightness into the hands. So this is, is very, very uh, personal, I would say. But so, uh, I can tell you that if I have uh, a uh, reference point and a reference uh, uh, quantity from 0 to 10, I used to have in my center and in my hand pressure, once I compete, not less than 6. Uh, about this case, uh, uh, that of course it is personal, I wanted um, just to say one thing that is important, that the same pressure to the center, same pressure in the hands, both partners must have. Just will tell you one funny story, you will understand that. When I was dancing with Arunas, he used to go very weak in the pressure in the hands. And uh, I, I was scared because I thought that he's dying, so he's, he, he's tired. And I used to squeeze like this the hands, so he would increase the pressure. With Mirko, when I hold the hand in the competition, normally, if you noticed, I would have the ring on the right hand, but this big ring I have to take off because if I dance with him, he squeezes me so much that uh, I'm going to faint. So because it's I very, love you. <laughs> so it's very personal. But it's better in the partnership to have both same pressure, to the center same pressure and to the hands. Okay. I think we can go to the next question, right? Yeah. Okay. Now this is very difficult name. I'll try to do my best. Du Hao Min from Taiwan is asking, how do you compose a choreography that suits me and our couple for competition? Can you talk about a couple of ideas, guidelines that I need to take in consideration in composing my choreography? So of course I can be also not nice and <laughs> say to watch uh, uh, Dance Sport Live. Uh, our lecture about the choreography and of course uh, you will find there many answers but um, to be more precise what would I need to know so the first question would be are you tall couple if you are tall couple maybe you should be concentrating more on the movement if you are very tall couple maybe you should dance more classical figures in order to show your qualities as a slow dancer, as a fullness of the swing, not such a lot of syncopations. If you are a very small couple, you have to be as fast as possible. So tricky choreography, difficult, lots of spins, spinning left, spinning right, depends on your ability of body. I always say to the couples, if you cannot do the kicks, don't do them. Practice the kicks, do your stretching at home, and then when it comes to making the choreography, you have to show the best that you can do. The best that you can do now. So things like kicks, things like rondes, things like head rolls, you have to be able to do that. So you have to improve your skills. Without the skills, all the kicks and the head rolls, they look just funny. So again, 
depend on the couple, of course, uh, on your speed also, on your partner's speed, and many, many difficult things, but also if you watch the lecture, it will help you. Yes, I am uh, totally agree with Adita, and um, Dao Hong Min from Taiwan, for sure. Uh, you ask about uh, uh, how do you compose a choreography that suits me, is difficult to tell him now, because if we don't see him dancing in front of us, for sure we don't know which kind of uh, uh, level, in, in which kind of level is a, as a dancer, and then which kind is of the phys is physical uh, uh, character. Maybe is a senior, and also in that situation we should uh, uh, apply a specific choreography that is suitable for the senior dancer. Um, definitely, it's not easy to answer, but I think that you you did a good job. Okay. Now, next one is Liam from Singapore. What is the feeling, character, that we should transmit, send in our quick step when we are dancing? This is a very good question because quick step, I from the music, from the speed, from the melody of the music, is immediately is bring me happiness. So and for sure, once we dance quick step, we should transmit the feeling of the happy. So you have to be happy, uh, and of course. Uh, you have to enjoy yourself once you're dancing. But even here, it's not so easy or to pretend. be happy. Or enjoy pretend, or pretend. Pretend sometimes. Because if you are off balance, if you feel that your partner is heavy, if you uh, feel like very tired, for sure you have to show that you are happy and you enjoy. This is the character of the quick step for myself. I agree completely with you. Next question, Vlad from Romania. How do you get inspired to develop fresh, up-to-date choreography? So this is a very good question because um, I noticed recent, recently many young couples are dancing very fresh choreography, but sometimes the choreography is not logical. So what is very important in creating choreography and understanding how to dance a choreography is that we have to actually understand first the rules and the basic steps and the basic principles and that will help to create a new steps that are suitable also for the dance. So this is uh, very important because I've seen recently a lot of fresh and interesting choreography and uh, at the end in just end up without the logic so it was killing the swing of the walls, it was killing the what I've seen from the bad side if I analyze. Uh, character of Foxtrot, uh, the flow of the Foxtrot, and of course uh, then all dances uh, can start to look like quick step. So that's why you have to really analyze the character of the dance. How do you get inspired? Inspired you get uh, together with your partner, trying things and uh, just uh, finding the boundaries of the basic steps and then sometimes breaking those boundaries. When you break the boundary, you can have uh, ending uh, with uh, in two ways. Positive, everybody will say, wow, that's new, it's amazing, we love, we want to do that. And you can say, we can, you can finish in another way that, uh, well, that is really looking strange and that is not good for the dance or that looks just stupid. So. Inspiration is of course important and I would advise also if you want really, really something special and something interesting that nobody's done before, also try to analyze a little bit other types of dancing. Ballet, tango, argentino, can be even salsa. So that helps to inspire. I would like also to answer to Vlad. Uh... Yes, is uh, sometimes the to update the choreography and to make some step that is uh, very fashionable, maybe give you an, a new feeling, a new aspiration to go into practice to practice the new step. And definitely, also when I was young, I was inspired by the new step that my teacher gave me, the new choreography, and. Uh, for sure, I go in with different uh, uh, stimulus to the practice. 
but then uh, I always going back to the principle. And I will say that uh, also the fashion is like this. Maybe sometime it's very fashionable what is uh, vintage. So also to use in some basic step now and put into your choreography can be vintage and can be very cool because nobody doing. So you should get inspired to how to dance the step and not how the step give you as a, a feeling because this step is more difficult. Because I believe that uh, it's not now the point to show the difficult step look easy, but it is uh, more difficult to show a easy step look like look interesting. So you should be able to show a very simple step but make it then interesting by your body expression, by your musicality, by your perfect footwork, by your quality of your dancing. Next question is Blair from Australia. Can you please explain the foot position of the lady relative to the man in promenade of tango? Very good question. So uh, if you imagine Blair, uh, one straight line, okay? And uh, this straight line is the main bone of the fish. And then to the side of this straight line, we have the small bone of the fish. So in total, you can see a fish bone. So to one side, there is the foot position of the man. And to the other side, there is the foot position of the lady. So in relation of the straight line, the foot position of the man has to be 45 degree inclination to this straight line and the foot position of the lady has to be 45 degree inclination to this line. So between the man's foot and the lady's foot there will be 90 degree angle. This is the foot position in tango. But you can go also to the Dance Sport Live uh, website and you can see our lecture and you can also demonstrate the foot position man and lady relative to each other in the tango promenade. I will show to Blair, so I will be a little bit more detailed. So imagine that I'm the man and Mirko is the lady. So lady has to stay more behind and man more forward. And as you see between our feet, we have a 90 degree angle. Take the step. And the step. And, and this step is passed. Lady is not staying behind. Ah, it's true. Go. Lady has to stay more behind. Bye. Good. Good. Die. Second step. <laughs> then it becomes too difficult. Anyway, you can see everything online. So this was the last question in this Q&A session and we will see you later with the other questions. Bye! Bye-bye!